wetlands. It's wetlands that they find a nexus between different anadromous water bodies and find that they're necessary to support wetlands. So there is a difference between the wetlands that are being cataloged here and the wetlands, say, that the uh, Corps of uh, Engineers uh, do for the 404 permit, which would include forest and a lot of other things that people wouldn't typically think of as wetlands. But I would have to defer to the department for uh, a more thorough explanation of how they went about cataloging those. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. That, that would be an interesting discussion, I think. Thank you. Representative Chanel, did you have a question? So, Madam Chairman, if I have this right, the department's been cataloging wetlands <clears throat> without the authority to do it for a number of years. Is that what you're saying? Representative Chenault, through the chair, um, yes. I don't think there was anything that explicitly said they couldn't do it, but they didn't have direct statutory guidelines to catalog wetlands. Um, I would, again, I would have to defer the department um, for further explanation on that. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <laughs> Madam Chairman. Representative Edgeman. Yeah. So thank you. So for somebody who's coming into this uh, discussion a little bit late, this is actually my first hearing, uh, committee hearing on, on House Bill 199. Is it fair to sort of categorize that a little bit differently and to say that this is also, um, you know, serving the purpose of modernizing some of these terms? Uh, given that these statutes go back, I, I don't know the exact year, but they go back quite a bit in time, don't they? Through the chair, Representative Edgman, yes, you put it much more eloquently than I did, which is that I, I would say it's a more fair characterization to say that we're modernizing this. And um, I, perhaps I've stated that in a way that maybe <laughs> threw the department under the bus in, in a way that probably shouldn't have been done. So, yeah. Uh, through the chair, I, I, I no, you didn't do that, but I just wanted to make sure that I was hearing that correctly. Thanks. Yep. Unless there's any more questions, moving on. Proceed. Um, Former subsection B was deleted, um, and this was on uh, former page two, lines five through uh, 13. Um, this, sub this subsection previously uh, contained the process by which the department may conduct a site-specific analysis to determine anadromy. Um, I'll get to it in a minute, but we deleted the anadromous waters presumption, so therefore the site-specific analysis um, determination section was no longer needed because that was the process by which if a water body was presumed anadromous, somebody could uh, request ADF and G to uh, conduct a site-specific analysis and determine whether it was or was not, in fact, anadromous um, and could undo that presumption, essentially. Um, it, ADF and G currently, um, without the presumption in there, they currently sample water bodies anyway before um, conducting an activity that is not listed in the anadromous waters catalog. Uh, so that was just a conforming change to reflect the repeal of subsection C below, which I will get to in a moment, unless there's any questions. Okay, former subsection C was deleted, and that was previously on page 2, lines 14 through 23. Um, this subsection contained the anadromous waters presumption. And again, for, for a refresher, this was the presumption that stated that all naturally occurring um, permanent or intermittent rivers, lakes, streams, and adjacent riparian areas were considered anadromous if it was connected to a water body that was in the catalog and was without a physical barrier in between that prevented the upstream and downstream passage of fish. Um, and the reason that, that we deleted uh, this subsection was through discussions with the different departments um, through our own research and just really delving into it, uh, we just came to the determination that the, the presumption wasn't really necessary because while it varies from area to area in the state, uh, approximately 50% of the anadromous waters catalog, um, or 50% of the streams and rivers and lakes in Alaska have been cataloged and have been surveyed. Um, and the remaining, out of the remaining 50%, there's, you know, approximately somewhere to 20 to 25% that will never be cataloged based on the altitude, above a certain altitude, um, and I would have to defer to the department, but I believe it's above 5,000 feet, uh, there just are not anadromous fish that seem to be present, um, based on a, also based on the gradient of certain uh, streams, rivers, lakes, or uh, streams and, and rivers, rather. Uh, they're above that, a certain gradient, they're not cataloging. Um, in areas like Denali and areas where you have protected use areas, there's very, uh, it's unlikely to, to have any development anyway. And on top of that, through discussion uh, with the different uh, permitting agencies and uh, different um, involved uh, industries, uh, we came to the conclusion that there really isn't an instance where 
a project occurs that the sampling isn't done anyway. So if it's not in the Anadromous Waters catalog, when they go out, when they conduct a project, they will do the sampling to determine whether there are or are not anadromous fish there. So it was something that was, uh, we just came to the conclusion that was not uh, necessary in the bill. And uh, moving on to former subsection D was deleted. On page two, lines 24 through 26, um, this subsection contained a clarification regarding what area of law the deleted presumption applied to, and it previously had just stated that the anadromous waters presumption only applied to the fish habitat statutes. And this was to confuse it over, you know, to confuse it from overlapping with uh, the Board of Fish's authority to regulate fish, and just a number of concerns that were out there that somehow the presumption um, applied to other areas and would overlap and interfere with different authorities. So uh, th again, that was part of the uh, uh, conforming section for the presumption, which was deleted, so that was also pulled out. Former subsection E was deleted. Um, this subsection contained the requirements for the department to adopt regulations that are no longer necessary as the corresponding uh, bill sections have been deleted. And this basically just housed the authority for the department to pass uh, the different regulations that had to do with the presumption, and so we uh, deleted that section as well. Um, moving on to subsection B, on page three, lines 20 through two, excuse me, through 28. Formerly subsection F on page three, lines four through 11. Um, we deleted naturally occurring in front of permanent on line 23, and this conforming change was made uh, throughout the bill. And the reason we did that was there's several concerns were brought to light regarding um, what naturally occurring meant. And essentially, fish and game in certain instances when they have a project, they will create um, spawning habitat. They will create a whole new uh, segment of, of river or stream that wasn't there before that's actually meant to increase um, the protections on anadromous fish. Those would not be included in the catalog with the word naturally occurring there because they're not naturally occurring because they were man-made. Also, when a river was altered or relocated, um, uh, a segment of it, a bend of it, because we were building a road, that segment would no longer be considered naturally occurring and thus could not be cataloged in the anadromous waters catalog. So by deleting naturally occurring, we, we closed that loophole and, and, and made sure that all water bodies, uh, or all rivers, lakes, and streams that have anadromous fish in them can be cataloged and can be protected. Um, so moving on, uh, we had de or, uh, deleted adjacent riparian areas, like I said uh, before. Um, and again, we inserted wetland on uh, line 27, and that conforming change was made throughout the bill as well. And that was just uh, to the point I previously stated about uh, putting wetlands in there along with the uh, rivers, lakes, and streams. Representative Newman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Matt, on uh, natural occurring, back to the former discussion there, and uh, trying to formulate my questions, on uh, uh, natural occurring waterways and streams were <coughs> there were automatically considered adronomous and now they're not going to be or cataloged as that because of artificial things, culverts or something, it's quite simply as, as easy as that. Um, again, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out when this, because this would allow the Department Department of Fish and Game to go back and start categorizing these, cataloging these. Uh, what, what function, is there a, a, a framework that they follow but to work with other departments? Do they work with soil and water conservation districts? Do they work with the local fishing industry or, or you know, industry representatives from affected uh, industries if there might be a mine in that area? How, how does that system work? Through the Chair, Representative Newman, um, it is a collaborative process. They do work with, uh, you don't have to be the Department of Fish and Game or the, um, the, the permittee to to help catalog something. It's a collaborative process involving all players, but I would like to, to defer that question to Ron Bankert, who's online, because he is the boots on the ground and the real expert about how, that, how that's done. And, and Madam Chair, I know that there's a lot to go through, so if you want to maybe go into these a little bit later in more depth, then that would be fine. I, Thank I, you. I, want to, I don't want to take up your committee time. I know this is important. Thank you. We, we will do that. We'll have lots of discussions, so that's... So proceed, Matt. Yes, on um, s subsection A on uh, page 3, line 29, through page 4, line 8, formerly page 3, lines 13 through 29. Um, we inserted or governmental agency 
on um, after person on line three, and this was to uh, conform with the uh, the existing 16005871 has government person or governmental agency. We didn't really want to change that, uh, so we just we included the governmental agency in that, uh, so that they would also be required to get a permit. Um, and uh, an error was uh, corrected from the previous draft on page three, um, line 17, and um, it basically um, it stated that a person must obtain an anadromous uh, must obtain a permit before constructing a hydraulic project that uses wheeled tracked and excavating or log dragging equipment. This was simply just an error in drafting. We meant to peel out the existing language and put it in the statute, and what ended up happening was, because the existing statute says before constructing a hydraulic project or using wheeled um, tracked or excavating log dragging equipment, so obviously we weren't trying to get at a hydraulic project that uses wheeled but a hydraulic project or using wheeled tractor excavating equipment. So that was simply an error in the last round of drafting. Oddly enough, I didn't notice it, and neither did anybody else. So we, we, had, that, um, we had that corrected. Um, we also deleted in subsection A um, references to the anadromous waters presumption. Um, subsection A on page 5 uh, is the next change, uh, line 12 through page 6. Um, and this was the uh, previously the significant adverse effects section. It's been renamed uh, the consideration of effects of an activity on anadromous fish and anadromous fish habitat. And again, this is why the title was changed because we we inserted that you know that the commissioner must also consider the effects on fish themselves and not just the habitat. Um, and it was renamed as shown above. Um, the wording in A on lines 13 through 16 was altered. Instead of the more prescriptive language of the commissioner shall find that a proposed activity has the potential to cause significant adverse effects on anadromous fish habitat under 1605871 through 901, uh, if the proposed activity, um, it now reads, in determining if a proposed activity has the potential to adversely affect anadromous fish habitat, the commissioner shall consider whether the pro proposed activity, and this just provided in the wording a little more discretion. Um, and moving on, uh, we deleted the term significant in front of adverse effects, and this was something that we got from uh, multiple departments that we dealt with. It's When we initially put significant in, we thought we were adding a higher bar, but in fact, uh, the Army uh, Corps of Engineers and other permitting regulatory agencies, they only use the term adverse effects, and they found the term significant actually confused the matter more and made it more difficult to determine what significant is. So it was kind of at the request of different agencies that it, it just be adverse effects. It doesn't have any real substantive effect on the bill. It's just aligning the terminology with the current terminology that other regulatory um, and permitting agencies use, including, including federal agencies. Um, and again, we deleted the word significantly, uh, which was formerly on page 5, line 10, which modified several of the uh, significant adverse effects at the time. And that was, again, because the department thought that significant and significantly were subjective and they were hard to come to a, a landing point on exactly what that was. Um, we inserted a new A7 on page 5, lines 30 through 31. Um, it states that the commissioner must consider if an activity will diminish the stability of a river, lake, stream, or wetland bank or bed and making the determination of whether it's a, a major or minor permit. Um, and this previously had not been in the bill, but it, it seemed like a, um, an, important, um, an important sidebar to put in there. So we added that one as 